You're the actor Vincent Gallo, right? Yeah, the actor, the director, the poet, the fashion model, motorcycle racer, legend, and the owner of your soul. Yes, Vincent Gallo, me. <sighs> the worst memory, uh... God, how do I choose? <laughs> Pick a day. Um, uh, I'll tell you the worst thing that happened to me as a kid with my father. Um, something that really changed my life, really in a, in a bad way. Uh, I was five years old at the time, and my brother was six years old and my sister was four years old. And we were sitting in the living room on a couch together watching TV. And my mother was vacuuming the, the carpet. And she found something under the couch, some chocolate, and probably why I used chocolate in the movie. And as a kid, I hated chocolate. I never ate chocolate. I wasn't allergic to it. I just didn't like it. Um, and she found chocolate under the couch, and it was stuck to the brand new carpeting. And uh, my family was very poor, so this was a big thing that we had carpeting in this room, and we were all sitting in the room trying not to make any dirt or anything. And she found this, car this chocolate. And she was very upset, very upset by it. So she, she started to complain and scream and who did this and you ruined the carpet and she moved the couch back and she started cleaning up and uh, she started screaming and my father came in the room, very aggressive and he took the three of us and he said, all right, who put the chocolate, who put the chocolate under the couch? Which one of you has put the chocolate under the couch? And my brother said, I didn't do it. And my sister said, I didn't do it. And he looked at me and he said, you little son of a bitch, I know it was you, I know it was you. You, you did it. And I said, I, I didn't do it. I, I, I didn't do it and I don't even eat chocolate. I don't like chocolate. Everybody knows I don't like chocolate. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And he said, don't, don't tell me because you're an evil, little evil bastard. I know you did it. And I said, I didn't do it. What, what about them? You, 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 why are you picking on me, you know? And uh, so he, he started hitting me, started beating me around the house and uh, slapping me. And, and he wanted me to admit that I had done this thing. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And I was not going to admit to doing it if I didn't do it. I was not going to admit to it. So he tried to hit me really hard several times so that I would break and admit that I did it. And I would not. He hit me hard and I'd say, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. So he put me in the car and it was evening time. It was dark. It was late. And when you're five years old, you know, nighttime is very scary. And uh, he drove me to the emergency room uh, entrance of a hospital in Buffalo but a hospital known for psychiatric patients, very similar to Bellevue Hospital. They had a psychiatric ward. And he told me that if I didn't admit that I put the chocolate there, that he was going to take me to this psychiatric ward because I was an uh, evil devil and uh, I needed to go live in a hospital and I would not be allowed to come home ever again. I'd have to go live with crazy people. So I was sitting in the car, I was very nervous, very nervous, but I didn't do it. Do you understand? I didn't do it. I didn't put the fucking chocolate under the couch. So I said, I didn't do it. And we pulled up to the entrance of the emergency room and, uh, and he told me one last time, okay? And I saw all the ambulances there and you know, those things, they're scary when you're young. It's just bad, you know? I, I just the hospital, the only memory I had of the hospital was my grandparents dying and bad things, bad things, bad things. So I was very scared, scared, very scared. And he told me, all right, listen, I'm gonna give you one more chance, you little son of a bitch. I'm gonna give you one more chance to admit that you did it or I'm gonna take you in that hospital or I'm gonna leave you there. And I said, but I didn't do it, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I, I swear it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And he came around and he dragged me by my ear out of the car and he started taking me to the emergency room entrance to the door. And just before we got to the door, I said, uh, okay, okay, I, I, I did it. 
I did it, it was me, it was me, I did it. And I think that he knew at that point that I didn't do it. I think he knew by my confession that I didn't do it, that I re it finally hit his mind that I really didn't do it. But it was too late. You understand, it was too late. He had gone so far that it was too late. And, uh, and it was just a bad thing. It was just bad. I had to admit, it just was bad. And ever since then, all somebody has to do is accuse me of something. Anytime somebody would be missing their wallet in, in, in class or in a bar, I, I desperately wanted them to find it because I thought everybody would, uh, would think it was me. But this, this moment was just really ugly. It was just bad, you know. It just was bad. But there was a million days like that. You know, there was a million days like that. That was an everyday thing. But, uh, but when I moved out of the house, when I was 16 years old, I moved out on my birthday, on my 16th birthday. My father, I had always told him, when I'm 16, I'm going to move out of the house. When I'm 16, I'm going to move out of the house. So on the morning of my birthday, he knocked on my door and he came in and he said, uh, all right, Mr. Big Shot, you think you're such a big shot since you're 16 years old? Then get the hell out of the house. So I packed up some things and I left. And uh, I went to some girl's house that I was dating at the time. She was a few years older than me. She had a, an apartment and everything. And, uh, and I thought, oh, this is fucking great. And I made a sign and two days later I hitchhiked to New York City and I, I moved to New York. And I was feeling really good, really good for about a month away from them. I felt really good. For the first time in my whole life, I felt like a person. Sorry, I don't talk too long. Now, as an adult, I remember a lot of those things as funny. But uh, in the moment, um, no, I didn't. I had uh, very little pleasure in a family sense, but I was very full of life. I mean, you know, I loved. I played baseball, football, basketball, I had hobbies, I raced motorcycles as a kid, I had lots of things. I loved being alive, but uh, anytime my father and mother came around, there was always something wrong, you know. So as long as I was away from them, I was really happy. And as long as I, I could go to the basement, do you have that in Japan? Do they build basements? No, okay, well, we have these things where you, under the house, there's a room, and it's a... Uh, um, uh, it's a place where you store things, but I had all my my pets there and my fish tanks and my models and all my things that I worked on and I would come home from school and I would go in the basement and just stay alone and I was very happy, very happy. I don't mean to complain or anything. I'm, <laughs> I'm a lucky person and 